Hey, it's Memorial Day and we're here in Indianapolis and we're headed to the World War Memorial Museum. So we're going to go in, we're going to take a look, and this is how we're celebrating Memorial Day. These are the list of Hoosiers who got the Medal of Honor during the Civil War and the China Relief Expedition and the Indian Wars, Spanish-American War, the Filipino Insurrection, Vietnam, Korea, World War I, World War II, This is a memorial to the men of the USS Indianapolis, which the USS Indianapolis was the ship that delivered the bombs to Japan. And this is a model of the USS Indianapolis. Still at sea, USS Indianapolis, in sincere appreciation for their bravery, courage, and faith, Captain of the USS Indianapolis, Captain Charles B. McVeigh III. Now, they do have a movie about the USS Indianapolis, and the USS Indianapolis is also mentioned in the movie Jaws. It is the ship that was hit by a torpedo, and men went into the water that survived and were taken out by shark. It was a it was a top secret mission that the Indianapolis was on so nobody knew they were out there and they were out there for how many days did it say how many days they were out there? Five, Five days before anybody came and rescued them. So this is just showing some of the stuff The little boy. That would have been the one that would have took out uh, Nagasaki. It's a model of what that bomb looked like that was uh, actually used. Actually, uniforms. Kind of hard to see. You got my reflection in there. And these are some of the crew members remembering them from the USS Indianapolis. Well, here we go. This would have been a model of the Japanese sub that actually fired on the USS Indianapolis, which, which caused it to sink. This is the uniform of Earl W. Riggins, Private First Class with the Marine Corps, who was assigned to the USS Indianapolis, and he was a survivor. Private Earl Riggins, US MCR. Salvador V. Maldonado, 
and Clarence E. Humpkin were also survivors and their dress uniforms or what maybe replica of their dress uniforms are here. presidential flag for the USS Indianapolis. This is the Tiffany Silver Service presented the USS Indianapolis by the state of Indiana in 1932. This Indianapolis commissioning pennant in 1932. This is a picture of the survivors of the USS Indianapolis when they came back to the United States aboard into Holland. Here we have a monument to the Indiana Air National Guard. And this is a barrel that was given to General J. Stuart Goodwin, Brigadier General J. Stuart Goodwin, who uh, they gave this to him when he retired. It's a barrel from the Gatlin gun of an A-10 Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt II aircraft. And he donated it to this museum. This chair is taken from a palace in Saddam Hussein's hometown of Tikrit, Iraq. Hussein was later captured about 10 miles southeast of Tikrit by forces commanded by U.S. Army Colonel James B. Hickey on loan from Robert Cup. to the Indiana Army National Guard, to the 1st and 293rd Infantry Battalion. The 1st and 152nd Infantry Battalion. And them being deployed to Afghanistan and Iraq. Some of the stuff that's, that the Iraqi soldiers used. An open display of a training aid, Iraqi RPG training aid, Iraqi light machine gun. the state flag. Operation Red Dawn. This is a photo and somewhat of a recreation of them finding Saddam Hussein in the spider hole.
says, as Baghdad fell, Iraq dictator Saddam Hussein and his son Uday and Kusay vanished. All three had numerous body doubles and would certainly attempt to disguise their appearance. The U.S. offered large bounties for each, and over the next eight months, special forces skirt the countryside, capturing Saddam's lieutenants one by one, but he and his sons remained at large. Sergeant J. Kenneth Rackle. Jonathan Kenneth Rankle was born in July 20, 1986 in Anderson, Indiana to Tricia Stockoff and Kevin Rankle. He displayed an affinitive towards the military equipment at a very young age, spending hours playing with his G.I. Joes and finding different outfits for them. John attended both Speedway and Center Grove schools and was heavily involved in athletics through his academic career. He excelled in football and won All-State Honorable Mention at the end of his junior year. He graduated from Speedway High School in 2005 with an overall GPA of 3.5. On June 7, 2010, Sergeant Rankel was leading two rifle squads when his lead unit came under enemy fire. He ran 600 meters to aid the lead unit, which was pinned down with only grain silage for cover. Rankel led an aggressive effort to return fire and prevent them from being overrun by the much larger enemy force. When ordered to fall back to allow an artillery assault on the enemy position, he selflessly remained remained, ordering his fellow Marines to withdraw while he provided covering fire. Once all of his Marines were out of danger, he attempted to fall back but was mortally wounded. For his actions that day, Rankle received the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star with Valor. He also received the Afghan Afghanistan Campaign and NATO Defense Medals posthumously. Other awards included multiple combat action ribbons, the Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal, the Iraqi Campaign Medal, the Sea Service Deployment Ribbon, and the Global War on Terrorism and National Defense Service Medals during his first tour, as well as three individual certificates of accommodation. Of accommodation. Sergeant, J, Sergeant John K. Rankle is buried in the Field of Valor at Crown Hill, Crown Hill Cemetery in Indianapolis. Tribute to the fallen heroes of Indiana since 9 11. Some of you know me. If you look up there, First Sergeant McLaughlin's name's on there. This is the uniform of Corporal Mathel, Matthew A. Commons. Matthew was one of seven special operations soldiers lost in the fight on Takurgar during Operation Anaconda, the largest battle of the war in Afghanistan. He volunteered to join the Rangers Quick Reaction Force dispatched to save a Navy SEAL pinned down on the mountain by Al Qaeda fighters as the helicopter landed, it was struck by an RPG and machine guns which killed a ranger and the door gunner and brought the Chinook crashing into the snow. The rangers scrambled and returned fire, but they were outnumbered 
and in the ensuing fight to secure the wounded from the wreckage, Matthew and another ranger were killed. However, the remaining rangers, with the help of some very close air support, went on to, the, to storm the enemy bunker on the summit and take to Kurgar. Also lost in the battle were Navy SEALs, an Air Force combat controller, and an Air Force pararescue jumper. He was from Indianapolis, Indiana. This was the operation in Bosnia under Task Force Scorpion. It was a S-415 in Bosnia. And uh, this was actually an operation I served under. And General Timothy J. Wright was who I served under. And this display is on him and the operations that took place in Bosnia. Scene from Desert Storm showing the, the uniforms they would wear and what the Humvees, what style Humvee they used during that time with a gunner in the cupola on a M2 Browning 50 cal. This is Sergeant Stephen L. Taylor. In 1972, during his third tour in Vietnam, Taylor was serving with D Troop 17th Cavalry Regiment and 1st Aviation Brigade. The unit was responsible for patrolling a 30 kilometer circumference around Da Nang Air Base to encounter frequent North Vietnamese rocket attacks. Since most of the attacks were under the cover of darkness, Taylor's unit developed the Nighthawk program to deliver constant overnight pressure on the enemy through roving teams of heavily armed attack and surveillance helicopters. On the evening of November 5th, Taylor was the gunner aboard an OH-6A KU scout helicopter searching for enemy positions when their aircraft came under heavy enemy fire. While, enga while engaging the entrenched enemy, both Taylor and the pilot, Warrant Officer Joseph D. DiNardo, was killed in action when their helicopter was shot down by a command-detonating treetop claymore mine. Taylor's awards include two Bronze Stars with V for Valor, two Purple Hearts, three Army Accommodation Medals with V for Valor, three Air Medals with V for Valor, Valor and the Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry. This is Corporal A, or Corporal P. Serber. Corporal Harold Paul Serber, a graduate of Arsenal Technical High School in Indianapolis, was drafted into the U.S. Army in 1950. In January 1951, he was deployed to Korea with Company C, 1st Battalion, 38th Infantry Regiment, 2nd Infantry Division. He fought through the early months of 1951 as the 8th Army advanced north to meet the communist expected spring offensive. Serber mailed a letter to his sister in March, which was the last contact the family ever had from him. By May 1st, 1951, the 8th Army was preparing for the enemy spring offensive by heavily fortifying the no-name line. The network of hilltop fortification included heavy log and sandbag bombers, multiple hands of barbed wire and anti-personnel mines, command detonate, napalm and gasoline explosives, and pre-registered artillery support. The 2nd Infantry Division was responsible for the central sector near Chinook, a likely corridor for the enemy advance. As of March 2014, Corporal Harold Serber is one of the 183 Indiana service members who went missing during the Korean War and are still unaccounted for. Korean War. And then some 
of the weaponry, which I would say is probably both. I believe it looks like there's a little bit of everything here, but it's supposed to be Korean War. Just got some of the stuff from uh, things from World War II. States Army Air Corps. Maybe from World War Two, uniforms. Different kind of weapons, different kind of uniforms, different areas. Here's the 38th Division Commanders, right here. Tom, Thomas, William H. Thomas, rank and organization Private First Class, 198th, 149th Infantry, 38th Infantry Division. He was awarded the Medal of Honor. Cyclone Division, the Avengers of Bataan. I'm really hoping that the music they're playing here won't get me a copyright strike. weaponry and different things they would normally have in Japan. One section now. This is some stuff depicting uh, Indiana soldiers in the uh, Spanish-American War. And 
This, of course, is the monument. This, the mo this is the monument. It's, it's a circle center, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. What is it? The, at the circle center of Indianapolis, isn't it? The monument? Um, I don't know if that's what it's called. I mean, it's the Soldiers and Sailors Museum. Yeah, Soldier Sailors Museum. But it's just a small replica of this in Indianapolis. Some flags, different Indiana. Tenth Battery of Indiana. Governor Oliver, Oliver P. Morton. So that was the War Memorial Museum here in uh, Indianapolis. And uh, we didn't show you everything, but the museum is free to everyone to come see. So I would suggest giving a donation. And uh, there's a lot, lot to see in there. A lot of vehicles, all different wars, all the way up to the, was it the Revolutionary War? Yep. All the way up to the Revolutionary War. And uh, this is just one of the things we did for Memorial Day. So we left the... Uh, War Memorial Museum and we are headed to the Circle Center of Indianapolis and we're going to see the Soldiers and Sailors Monument which is just right ahead just right up here ahead of us in front of Margie and Haley you can kind of see the monument it kind of came down below the trees that's where we're headed one of the other things that you might not know is Indianapolis is only second in the nation for monuments that's dedicated to veterans of different wars. It's second to Washington, D.C. So, and it's, Indianapolis is just a beautiful town to just visit. I just like sometimes to come here and just walk through the city. I don't know why I like walking through big cities but you can just walk around and people watch and there's so much stuff to do here. There's different museums and everything like that in Indianapolis. So we're still headed towards the Circle Center and uh, we're passing different kind of monuments all the way through here. But it's just, it's just a feeling of uh, being a, with a, something big but, and it's starting to rain, so. I think it's just off the trees. Is it just off the trees? Uh, we are getting closer and closer to the Circle Center. And uh, if possible, if it's not too far of a walk away, might walk over to the canal to the Medal of Honor memorial as well. Inside the monument is the Soldiers and Sailors Museum. Don't think we'll be going in there today. That might be a different trip. But this area up here is the reason why, why Indianapolis is called the Circle City. They got everything set up because they had a parade. Was it yesterday or the day before? Saturday, I 
Saturday for the Indianapolis 500. So just to give you a look what it looks like around the circle. So yeah, that was our uh, that was our trip on Memorial Day. Uh, we had a good trip. Uh, enjoy going in, in, in Indianapolis a lot. Uh, like I said, uh, recently did a car show. Don't know if you've seen that. Plan on doing some more car shows. We'll probably return to Indianapolis to see more museums. And we got a lot of other things that we got planned and that we're looking at doing. So, as for that, can't wait to catch you on the next adventure. Thanks for watching. Thank you.